Welcome to another FM synthesis tutorial. In this video I'm going to share some practical tips on how to better understand and use the DX7's envelopes. So let's start with some basics. In synthesizers, amplifier envelopes break up a sound into four events or parts, attack, decay, sustain and release, or ADSR. This point here is where a key is pressed, and this point here is where a key is released. The envelope shape between these points represents the volume and tone of our sound while a key is being held. There are two features to each of these four regions, level, represented by these points, and the rate, represented by these lines leading to each point. So looking at the attack region, we can set the height of level one, and by adjusting rate one, we control the speed it takes to reach that point. The same goes for all of the other regions and their corresponding level and rate controls, as you can see above. If you're following my videos, you'll know by now that carriers and their edit parameters affect volume aspects. Modulators and their edit parameters affect tonal aspects, and this applies to their respective envelopes as well. Editing carrier envelopes will allow us gradual volume changes, and editing modulator envelopes will allow gradual tonal changes. This is similar to amp and filter envelopes on subtractive synths. Knowing the difference between these two roles will make for better FM envelope programming. Let me demonstrate. Here I have a sawtooth tone. It's generated by a carrier and a modulator, and their envelopes are identical. Based on the current settings above, the sound starts at full volume once a key is pressed, and reaches silence immediately after a key is released. If I switch the modulator off, my carrier's sine wave returns to normal. If I switch the modulator back on, and switch the carrier off, I lose the sound completely. Envelope control allows us to alter this exact effect over short or long periods of time, making gradual increases and decreases of volume and tone while the key is pressed and after it is released. I normally set my envelopes for a rate programming method. This is how I set mine up. First, set your carrier level values to the following. My attack remains at full volume, which is 99. My decay drops down to zero, which is equal to silence. Level three, my sustain, again drops down to silence. And level four, the release, remains at silence. Next, you go to your rate settings for your carrier. Rate one remains at 99 for full speed. Rate two drops down to zero for the slowest speed. Rate three, our sustain rate uh, remains at 99. And rate four, our release rate remains at 99. Now you copy this over to your modulator, you press store, the screen will ask you which operator you want to copy your current settings to. My modulator is operator 2, so I'll copy it to operator 2. The sound responds just the same as our default envelope settings, but when we go to program these envelopes they'll behave a lot differently. This new envelope will allow you to adjust rate values and get similar behavior to a subtractive synth envelope. By focusing on the rate values only, you have less to adjust and have less to remember. And these new settings work for most musical purposes. Of course, you can still ignore these settings and experiment, but if you get confused or things aren't making sense, I recommend returning to these settings. To demonstrate these new envelope settings, uh, let's just make a few changes. So. Let's work with our rates only because we've set our envelope up for rate programming. And right now I'm on my carrier, which is going to adjust volume changes. So let's just change the attack. Let's return that to 99 and let's adjust the decay. So right now the decay has dropped down to zero. Let's return that to zero and let's go forward to our release so the release is at 99 let's slow that down remember this is engaged after the key is released okay so you notice there I have the sawtooth up until I release the key and then it turns into a sine wave that's because my modulator 
still has an instant release. So once I let go of the key, the modulator is switched off and then my carrier is unmodulated. So to fix that, I just need to go to my modulator's release rate and either make it equal to what's currently 40 or greater than 40. So it needs to be between zero and 40 in order to modulate my carrier's sine wave right the way through. So if I put it down to 40, it still tapers off, so if I put it to 30, it should modulate all the way. And if I drop it all the way to zero, yeah, you can hear it all the way there. That example in particular is a really good demonstration of uh, why you need to synchronize your carrier and modulator envelopes sometimes. And that's just using two operators, by the way. So I still have another four operators available to me to create other parts with their own envelope behaviors, all uh, working within each other to create a really thick, layered, textured sound. So having control over rate and level values for each of your operators does free this machine up to perform some very interesting and very unique behaviors. One of them is, is this here. Behaviors like this are very unique to envelopes of this type, where you can set the rate and the level for each stage. Subtractive synthesizers traditionally have the level values predetermined for the attack, decay, and the release, and so those controllers there at the uh, amplifier envelope are just rate controls, generally. Um, in, in that aspect, actually, there'll be more time controls, how, how much time it takes to reach certain level values that are preset. So there it is. Those are the envelopes on the Yamaha DX7. If you use a different FM synthesizer, I hope that these videos are helping you as well. And before I go, I just want to say a massive thank you to my subscribers. Thanks for supporting the channel. The more subscribers I get, the more videos I release more frequently. So if you're not a subscriber, click the button. If you have any requests or any questions regarding FM synthesizers, leave them in the comments below, and I'll try my best to get back to every one of you. Until then, keep programming, keep practicing. Thanks for watching, and I'll be doing more videos on other platforms really soon, including Drum Machines, so keep an eye on the channel and become a subscriber. I'll see you next time.